And uh, next, I'll uh, introduce Leo Jenkins, the Army Ranger of our group. And uh, yeah. All right, why not a war one? Uh, this is another American blockbuster. This is my war movie. There's no famed actors on set and the lighting is never right. Just a bunch of boys turned to men learning how to fight. We changed directors a dozen times, blurred the lines of our crimes with foreign extras filling faded chalk outlines. We went off script and flipped from compassionate protagonists to ravenous antagonists. Hearts and minds and ticket sales, scarred old bodies telling tales of honor, virtue, filling seats, making fortunes for Washington elites. 17 years, no end in sight to the longest war movie we never quite got right. I wrote poetry when I came back from the Marine Corps to uh, help me cope with uh, everything that went on overseas. Um, this one's called Conflict, it's a haiku. All of us enrolled, conflict resides in our soul, still out on patrol. You know, I, I think that since ancient Greece, there's really two categories for the written word, and that's comedy and drama. And it's basically, does it end happy, does it end sad? The war having long been over for me, thrust back into it, another comrade dies overseas. Ripped out of the pallid now, mind racing, when was the last time I saw him? I'm gonna get away from, I'm gonna get away from the war theme, just for a, just for a second or so. Um, the internet's a strange place, we've all visited it, I'm, I'm sure. Pull up your stools and wet your beak on these obscenities. Raging racist toxic masculinities, masturbating taco trees blowing in the breeze. We're drowning in our disease. And this one's called Not Today. It's so loud I forget who I am. I can't feel anything, I can't hear anything. I try to open my eyes. Digi desert straight jacket man thrust back into the war fighting land. Need a clap. Need a clamor, need a million followers to matter, oh please. Let's get back to those obscenities. You will not meet death today, not today. You may go through loss. You will see horrors, but you will not experience death, not today. Narcissistic tendencies, gender remedies, presidential depravities, leveraged generosities, likes for currencies, HD bukkakis, oh please. This stranger, moon wanes over such sleek body seen, time away robs and instills, eyes that held mountains once so familiar, now shows these bleak foreign hills. I gather myself, I'm standing two meters away from the blast site, I look around the area, I feel the sun, I smell the air, I see my boys. Not today, motherfucker. My name is David Rose, so I'm the author of a book called No Joy, and uh, the author of From Sand and Time, where I was just up in D.C. and got to uh, shake the hands of uh, Secretary of Defense Mattis. I joined the Marines in mid-2002 and was able to take the recon screening. I passed and was a recon Marine for several years, deploying to Iraq, meeting really good dudes. I mean, it's, it's more family than family. I just literally liked writing. I liked trying to create something from scratch. And uh, eventually the Tupperware bin that contained my chicken scratch got, you know, heavy enough to kill someone if thrown off a balcony. In my late 20s when I was getting my master's degree, I had sort of come full circle and realized that, that the arts were something that uh, I enjoyed to the point where it was willing to take a pay cut, willing to sort of go against the grain of the hyper-masculine veteran culture and, and uh, put out some work that uh, I found some joy in. Thing around me. Whee! Yeah, they just like we all just got a text message saying that there's a uh, flash flood warning and to avoid them. Would have been nice if they would have included where the fuck they're at. It definitely looked like it was fucking raging hard. Bro, there's like trees and shit flying around. Yeah. I don't want to say I hope something really bad happens, but. <laughs> but I hope something really bad happens. 
<laughs> I know, I know. But that's what makes good stories. So yeah, you guys were on one. <laughs> so so let's be honest, if in the first two hours of this thing, our RV gets fucking washed away by a, a flash flood or something, yeah. and we survive, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, we could definitely write a book about that. It would just turn, there'd be no verses. It was just a two hour curses <laughs> tour. <laughs> I'm Leo Jenkins. I'm a professional dirtbag and part-time writer. <laughs> um, I forgot the question. <laughs> you know, I think similar to a lot of the people of our generation, the, the events of September 11th was a big catalyst for why I went into the military. I had a, a, a mentor of mine, a pararescueman, who pretty much told me, a hard dick like you and fuck that, you need to go into the Rangers. And I, at the time, I really didn't know too much about the Rangers, but I started I started reading a lot of the books, uh, you know, the Vietnam books, the Six Silent Men, and the um, you know a lot of a lot of that literature that was out. And I was like, wow, like this is a you know this is an organization that I think I would love to be a part of. I wanted to keep the medic route because I was an EMT firefighter before I went into the military, and I just wanted to continue that. Somebody got money? I'm just gonna go. Yeah, fuck it. We wanted to get together. None of us had ever met before we agreed to live in an RV together for a week and a half. You know, we didn't necessarily know one another's personalities other than through our writing. And, um, and so we really thought that it would be a good idea to get together and, uh, and, and do some type of a, a warm-up event. We found an open mic night in DC. We were like, wouldn't it be funny if we just went and took over this open mic night? You know, just kind of like masturbating taco trees blowing in the breeze. There was, I think we were like the, the only guys in there. Of this is and they said I'd beat her in my sleep. You could tell we were very out of place, you know, tattoos and whiskey glasses in hand and all got our books that we were gonna read from and, and definitely we were a different sub crowd than they were used to so but we're trained killing machines, aka Marines, with a shit ton of poise. First day of school guys. First day of school. Well, one, look cool. We decided last night to park our RV outside of the city and take a train in uh, for our first official event of Verses and Curses at Emmett O'Looney's in Manhattan. Hopefully you'll be back when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Uh, this place has a lot of history behind it, man, and it's definitely a place that uh, on Memorial Day to kick off something as unique as versus and Curses Tour. It's actually pretty gorgeous just standing in here and just seeing the people move around and making it feel good, you know? It's like, it makes it feel good in my soul. The camera loves me. The camera wants to fuck me. it up a little bit. I'm going to get away from the war theme uh, just, just for a little bit here. Talk about, uh, talk about struggle. We all have struggle. I've used music my whole life to get through struggle from the time I was a kid uh, till, till just this minute. And, and this, one's, uh, this one's about that. It's called Ode to Dr. Dre. I grew up on Deftones and Dr. Dre, trading changasos, con vatos on a playground where I spent most of my day. I grew up in Melee, a mom with a gun to her head, telling her kids we drove her to this. I grew up in bliss of ignorance, a screen telling me who to be. But I grew up free. So I signed on the line for God and country, the new warrior class. Then I grew up fast, sitting on the body bags of decapitated men. A small price to pay, they say. I'm all grown up now, still listening to Deftones and Dr. Dre. One thing I, I really would like to uh, start off with is, um, you know, when you get into the arts professionally, you, you really kind of have to go back before you go forward. And one thing you learn quick is ever since ancient Greece, 
The West has been uh, a very oral culture. We've had a strong oral tradition. It's the belief that these sort of conventions of gathering and sharing information and ideas is the most powerful, you know, wafting off the pages of a book or just uh, spoken word that uh, uh, you get the most out of it as the speaker and the listener in an environment like this. Yesterday the sun came up, not like the day before. Yesterday it came up faster with so much more. Baking our skin under our frog tops, swinging sticks that aren't even on, IED after IED, no water from the COC, the list could go on and on. This is an excerpt from a uh, tale that is entitled BAH. You know what BAH is? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? It's a cat tap dancing. His shoes are ruby red with specks of green. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? So embrace the inevitable loss that you will undergo and you'll succeed in an environment that's meant to take your soul. She had that golden makeup around her eyes coming to the sides in that feline type slash that strippers and goth girls love to sport. Her friend was a body redhead. She was of that uppity Irish essence <laughs> with an ass that looked to be forged from riding horseback and marine. <laughs> I didn't know how to draw six men standing tall before the blast, before the fall of two fathers, six sons, and a newborn ghost. I can live those things in lucid dreams, second squads, alpha, and bravo teams disappearing. Memorial Day is for the ones that stayed, for the ones who left home and strayed far away, for the ones who will never see another day. Memorial Day, we remember the ones who are absent, for the ones we think about, immerse in the action. For the ones who are immeasurably valiant. For the ones we lost from every battalion. Our kind has battled so many bold men. The Deutsch and the Jap and the Kong. Mean sons of mean bitches every now and again, but every one of them worthy of song. Yet no great foe for generation Y. Boy beaters, girl slavers galore. Respect for granddads, but not for mine. Sons of the sand we loathe and abhor. So drink up. It's a sober day in the schoolhouse. Guys are nervous about this event because I imagine most of them have never received a finger in their ass before. I say most because, well, like I said before, the school has several Navy guys. <laughs> Memorial Day is like every other day for us. We're the ones who need not be reminded of our loss. Our brothers live on in our hearts and our wrists, forever informing us that we've been dismissed. We miss our brothers every single moment, and every moment beyond that is life's cherished token. They now live on in our memories, where we keep them alive as remedies. For when life seems tough, you can focus on our legacy. I am forever grateful I knew these men personally. The papers claim to know the aim of these cowards and misguided fools, but it's the few who came into the barren game that know foreign policy's tools. And if there are left a million doors to kick, we'll be kicking till our last heart beat. Able and willing and god awful quick, but fate, no, we call you a cheat. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you. This was, a, this was a hairball idea we came up with like four weeks ago. <laughs> it's the first night, this is the, you know, really a, a, very much a trial run and to do it here at Emino Looney's in New York City on Memorial Day is such a fucking honor. It truly is, this is, I, it's the nicest bar I've ever been allowed back into. <laughs> it's a strange thing, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a little different, it's, it's two different uh, demographics, uh, poetry, and, and you know, combat veterans, and to, to just show that we are, we can wear more than one hat, right? We're not all knuckle draggers or crayon eaters. Uh, we, can, we, can, we can do more than one thing, right? And we wanted to create a platform for that, but we're, we're so honored that you guys came out and the people who shared. Thank you, thank you, it was, it was amazing. I, I was, thank you. So. I don't know, they, they may or may not be the best hot dogs, but they will always be the most expensive hot dogs. I think the initial 
like the seed for the verses and curses tour was initially just you know David Rose and I were talking about we you know we both had a poetry book drop within like two weeks of each other it was kind of like oh you know here's this person who's got a very similar trajectory to me similar backgrounds and the idea that it kind of uh, just started rolling and very quickly early on David uh, Rose was like you know we got this guy uh, Justin who's he's you know he's a great poet and marine Hi. look at this homeless Vietnam vet carrying all his wares <laughs> you guys can fucking see me can't make a, can't make a claim like this in America and it not be true this is the world's best picture of a hot dog since 1979 you know, there was an idea of an RV and then it was like let's do New York City and let's try to do Boston and let's do Atlanta and let's do and you know none of us you know I think have it in them to say I know I can't do that it's a great thing how does it feel after a day like today to come back to a fucking RV? It's amazing. It's great times. Oh, Marty, say hello to the camera. Hello. My name is Marty Scoblin. Taking on a tour of Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Marty the nation's clever. most homogenous <laughs> town. That's a shout out to Matt Sanders. <laughs> I'm going to deal with Leo asking me to say something clever 488 times over the course of that footage. Uh, bathroom's in there. There's three towels on the bench. Those are the three clean ones we have. I don't know. I don't know if we need showers yet. How's my hair doing grease-wise? Does it seem like it's? Do I, am I filthy? I, like the proper level of uh, uh, tour filthy? I've been wearing the same shirt for the last couple of days. Slept next to a, a toilet. Uh, I think I could probably squeeze at least one or two more days out of this. The old town first called Strawberry Bank later changed to Rivermouth, is now called Portsmouth. It was originally settled in 1623, three years after the Pilgrims landed at Plymouth. So what is there to do in this town besides delicious eats? I mean, Hot eating and drinking, um, the inlet to the ocean is just past the street here, so you can literally put a kayak in and paddle out to the ocean. Do you guys have Froyo? What's Froyo? They do have a gelato spot over there. It's not often I'm disappointed in you, Martin. Leo, I can't keep up with all your super white guy hipster trends. I imagine it's like slack lining or <laughs> hacky sack or something like that. <laughs> you, you, you millennials and your, <laughs> your weird <laughs> hacky hobbies. I'm saying that's one of them to do it. My music is not fucking like that at all. What kind of music do you want? Your head banging music? Born, Metallica, fucking Slipknot, I don't care, bro. I mean, it's up to you, obviously, but like maybe we, I'm a, because I, I have a few kind of like reserves, and I'm thinking like, like, do we go and do we see how the crowd's reacting? You know what I mean? Like what the yeah. crowd not only looks like, but what they're making facial expressions <laughs> about, right, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. And every crowd is different, mm -hmm. right? It, steps, right. It, it pulls me away from being in any way like the levity if we're going in that rotation. Just, you know, with, with Justin's material tends to be in this vein. Yeah. And uh, to double down on it, you know? Because for me, I, this is kind of a, a special one for me only because there's guys I worked with that are coming. So I'm going to be real big about like the brotherhood stuff. Describe who I am, man. It's hard. Born in South Florida, grew up on the ocean, patrolling through those lakes with little John boats and shit, trying to attack alligators for no reason. I don't know if that would define who I am, but definitely defines my background and where I come from. 
that's a hard uh, question to answer, I guess. There's a lot of things that go into being a human being, I think, and I think that everybody has a lot of different pastimes and passions and influences in their life. I joined the Marine Corps when I was 19. I uh, became a combat engineer. I had no idea that Afghanistan was even gonna take place. They were just like, if you're lucky, you might go to Iraq. And we're like, yeah, okay, you know, whatever. And then three months into the fleet, they're like, we're going to Afghanistan now, and it's apparently gonna be a big fucking ordeal. Coming up next is the young gun of our tour, uh, two-time Afghanistan vet, and uh, a very, very intense gentleman in uh, various shades of poetry, and uh, we really enjoy listening to him, having him on the tour, and I'm uh, sure you'll see why soon. So give it Justin Egan. Uh, this one, um, uh, it's called G-Watt Trap Lords. Um, if you guys don't know what a trap star is, um, listen to young Jeezy. <laughs> 31 North and 63 East. This is where you'll find our clarity increased. Helmand Valley Gun Club is a brotherhood of warriors. From Nalzad, Marja, and Sangin, our battlefields are notorious. Close the feed tray cover and rack it back twice. Adjust the T&E while it's aiming down the sights. Merkin and Marja are banging and Sangin. Every single step we're sweeping and clearing. Bipping IEDs while shooting tow missiles. When IDF comes, you'll hear the whistle. High Mars all day, flying high in the sky. While everyone is watching, we're taking shit from supply. <laughs> we're the GWAT trap lords. Pop smoke on that wall charge. We're not taking the door. Poetry is a good thing. I like writing poetry. It's a beautiful thing. Very interpretive for a lot of people. It's deep without having to be 500 and 600 pages long. You can write one poem and have it be, hit somebody right in the ball sack with it, you know? Hit them right in the soul. And I'm gonna dedicate this today to Nick Davis, who was uh, uh, in my platoon in Iraq a million years ago, and uh, truly one of the finest men I met while I was in the Marine Corps. Honor, yeah, I know honor. He is a man I met late in life, late as it means to the long lost teen from soil so honorless rife. Granddaddy clung to the underbelly, American dream ripping flesh from his palm. Granddaddy was a train hopping bandit who I'd said fought in Vietnam. Well, I had always liked it as a kid and uh, I just sort of enjoyed it as a hobby. Wrote it when I was active duty. I wanted to diversify my uh, book list and figured that it was the time to sort of strike into the uh, poetic theater. Pulled one day or pushed, I could declare. Many faces now proud, one silence now loud, met me, this honor so rare. Here today, I look upon you, seasoned faces gilded as if divine. Here tonight, I cave and I embrace thee. Truly fathers and brothers are truly mine. And poetry, I think, for me, was just, it was the, it was the natural thing. I, I just, I didn't, it, it didn't really even occur to me to write poetry necessarily. I'd been writing kind of more lyrical style from the very beginning. It just, I didn't know how else to express that. And what we discover about each other when the sun turns to snow is a brother won't run for cover when his brother's blood begins to show, even though we know it's what makes the green grass grow. I think that ultimately at the end of the day that this helps not only us, but I think it helps a fuck ton of people to, to realize like damn veterans aren't just American flag on your on the court on the side of your shirt. Like that's not what it is. Like it's a bunch of dudes who are diving deep into some fucking emotional shit. So few of us that patrolled along the footpath, so few of us that felt the piercing blast. So few. So a few of us warriors that came home last, so few of us who made it back, it went by like a flash. So few is less than 1% of our military, so much weight for so few of us to carry. I'm not gonna say we're missing it, but I think we're deficient in it, is to acknowledge our diversity. The term veteran is extraordinarily broad, is that you know there can be veterans who believe in God, veterans who don't. Veterans who vote red, vote blue, don't vote at all. We all have different fucking takes on everything. We all have different views on everything. We all look a certain way. We all have a different style about ourselves. So you, you blend that together and it, you know, you breaking barriers, you're breaking the mold of what like 
most people think that you want better and would feel and say and do and act. We're kind of breaking that mold and doing something different. Whatever sort of category you personally fall into, you're still a veteran, and so does your veteran brother or sister who you may disagree with on every goddamn level, is that uh, we owe it to ourselves to be honest with society about who we are and also who we were, why we joined, why we wanted to fight. My brothers know suffering is the show, not the medals glow or a million yellow ribbons dancing back home. My brothers know how far we'll go together. My brothers know. You know, I've always said that I find it an insult. They'll let us do the fighting, but God forbid we uh, are ourselves once we get out, you know? So I would say that we're a bit deficient in acknowledging and exactly how um, diverse we can be and sometimes when that's controversial within our own house. And I think that's changing and that makes me very happy. Uh, it makes me very happy to see more more veterans uh, sharing their experience. I, I really think that we're a cross-section of, of society that has very unique life experiences that we can take and mold into something very powerful that you know, will not just help bridge this gap with, you know, between our, our nation's veterans and civilians, but, but leave a lasting legacy of, of what we can create. You know? and I, think that's, I think that's something worth doing. This, uh, this last one, I'll, I'll close it out with. Uh, unless anybody has one, if they want to. All right. Uh, this is called More Than Our War. I still remember when we stood together then. Boys becoming men, seeds becoming trees, becoming corpses, walking. I still remember when we learned to hold our own amid the smell of innocence burning becoming brothers, I still remember when. The ones returned still burn, this time from the inside, night after sleepless night, begging to feel less alive. The ones returned unknowingly earned, the undeserved honor and burden born of medals worn and countless brothers now to mourn. The weight of each a stone to fill the pack upon our back until the load snaps bone, testing our apt to atone. Now, to pull that stone from the pack upon our back and save the snap of bone. I learned we are worse alone. Came together again, brothers reborn, and with that stubborn stone built a towering throne where now we sit and see through burden born a forever endeavor. But let's be now more than our war. <laughs>